Not only is today the last day in which the Bulls have a game before the All-Star break, but it is also Wednesday, and every Wednesday on this channel, we do my reactions to your Bulls hot takes, and boy do we have some good ones for you today, so let's get right into it. So what's going on everyone? You're listening to Bulls Central here, I hope you're all doing well. So I meant to include this first take in my last video, and I completely missed it when organizing the screenshots, but this one is so hot that I could not include it in here. And it comes to us from the Lonely Stoner, and he says, if Zach Levine continues playing at this level or better, he could be considered the next Jordan slash Kobe. Jordan, Arrow, Kobe, Arrow, Levine. So my guy, now I know how you got your name, and I'm really curious now what kind you've been smoking, because first of all, Levine, at his current level, uh, will not be put on Kobe and Jordan's level. First of all, I hate it when people put Kobe on Michael Jordan's level because Michael Jordan is in a tier of his own, as great as Kobe was. But if Zach Levine stays at this level, and I know you said or better, so I'll get to that in a sec, but if he stays at what we see from Levine right now, I mean, as great as Zach Levine has been in putting up incredible numbers and actually leading the Bulls team to win, at least somewhat anyway, the Bulls are still three games below 500. But to say he'll be considered the next Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant, two Hall of Fame superstars that are iconic in the game of basketball, come on now. Now to be fair, I know you made this take around the time when Levine was selected as an All-Star. And of course, there was a lot of excitement and hype from Bulls fan, which justifiably so, even myself, I was uh, one of those who was excited about him getting selected to the All-Star game. On top of that, I had guys in my last Hot Takes videos talking about Levine and how he's better than LeBron James, so you're not the only one with these types of takes in the heat of the moment when he was selected to the All-Star game. And also, to be fair, I know you said he would be considered the next Jordan or Kobe, which... The way that I'm interpreting that, and I hope I'm correct in thinking this, is you mean that Levine, it's not necessarily that he will be a better player than Kobe or Michael Jordan, but rather because he's a shooting guard with extreme athleticism, a good mid-range game, and slashing ability to the basket, that he would somewhat replicate their style of play. And yes, sure to an extent, but both Michael Jordan and Kobe, especially MJ, were far better on defense than Zach is. And that's a big factor when comparing their talents side by side. Now you also said if Zach continues to play at this level or better, well I guess it depends on you know how much better we're talking about, right? I mean, Zach is currently in his seventh season in the league. He's 25, making his first all-star appearance. He has gotten better with every passing season, no question there. But can he continue to get better to where he becomes a superstar, a superstar leading his team to multiple championships? Like I said, Levine has been great. He's been having a phenomenal season. He's really proven me wrong in a lot of regards. But uh, as Bulls fans, we need to just take a little bit of a step back and realize we've got a great player who will hopefully continue to grow and get even better. But to say he'll be considered the next Jordan or Kobe or like others who were, you know, last week who were saying that he'd be better than LeBron James, no, not even close. Next up, we've got Andro Smack with the hot take of Patrick Williams will be the Bulls' second highest scorer next year. So I love the optimism. I would love to see Patrick Williams take a big leap on offense starting next season and absolutely think he can get there eventually. But next year as the second best score, I think is unlikely, especially given he's only averaging 10 points per game right now and is sixth on the team in scoring. Uh, seventh, actually, if you count auto, but I'm leaving him off for now, given the fact that he really hasn't played enough games. Um, now, obviously, the assumption is, you know, Zach will be the team's leading scorer next season. And I still believe the Bulls will retain Markinen. And at this point, I don't see Patrick Williams scoring more than Lowry in just his second season, while Lowry will be in his fifth. But let's say for a moment the Bulls don't keep Lowry, whether they trade him before the deadline or they let him walk in free agency. Do you really think Patrick Williams is going to score more points than Kobe White? I mean, Kobe, despite his struggles, has improved his scoring from his rookie year, averaging 16 points per game so far this season. So the hope, anyway, is that he would average even more, you know, since generally with young developing players, you'll see their numbers go up every season leading up to their prime. So 
I would say it's unlikely that Patrick Williams averages more than Kobe White. You know, even Wendell, although I think it is more likely for P. Will, you know, that he could surpass Wendell in scoring. But as of right now, Wendell does score more than Patrick. And this isn't a knock on Patrick Williams for not, or not having faith in his abilities. He just hasn't developed his offensive game quite yet. He's a better defender, and on top of that, he's only going to be 20 in his second season next year. So I don't see him making that kind of leap in just one season, but I would love to be proven wrong in that regard. Okay, next up we have Kyle Williams. The Bulls are running out of time with Zach Levine. He's not gonna sign an extension. The Bulls have to get him some help before next season starts or he's leaving. So I agree with some of what you're saying. I don't think Levine is going to sign an extension, partially because of how well he's been playing and the fact that he was selected as an all-star. He's likely gonna wait until he becomes an unrestricted free agent to get max money. But as far as the Bulls needing to get him some help before next season or he's leaving, well, to be clear, let's, you know, let's say the Bulls don't get him help for this upcoming season. He actually can't leave uh, because he would still be under contract in the final year of his deal next season. You might, uh, you know, I've been saying, well, in the sense that he'll demand a trade next season if they don't get him help. And I guess, sure, yeah, that's possible. But I don't think it'll happen because I do think the front office is going to make some big moves in the offseason to get Levine some help. I really do believe that because I think they know uh, that if they don't and the Bulls continue to lose, yeah, Levine is likely going to request a trade because he doesn't want to waste his prime years on a losing team. So I think they will get him some help in the form of a better defensive big man, some better playmaking, and even some additional scoring support to complement Levine. As far as your first point, are the Bulls running out of time? I wouldn't go that far because they do still have Levine under contract next season. Uh, they do still have the ability to, to negotiate an extension and he's only 25, he's not 28 or 29. So I would say time is somewhat on their side, but I agree if they don't make some key moves this off season to get Levine some help, then yes, they'll be at risk of losing him. Next up, we have Brian M. And he says, Wendell is more valuable to the team's success than Lowry. If I had to pick one to trade away, it would be Lowry, especially considering our second round pick, Marco, is basically a young Lowry. So I will add this take was actually made last week. So this was before Wendell's two most recent poor performances. And at the time of the take, Wendell was actually playing considerably well. But I first want to address the point regarding Marco Simonovic because I've been seeing a lot of fans saying, well, we don't need Lowry. This guy is younger and just as good, if not better than Markkinen, which I'm kind of scratching my head on this one thinking, well, based on what? First off, we need to understand that the Bulls have the draft rights to Marco. It's very possible he may never play a game in the NBA. And I would say it's unlikely we'll even see him in the lineup next season. And if you've seen him play or looked at his numbers, I mean, yeah, he looks decent. He's got decent numbers. But this isn't a Nikola Mirotic type situation who was playing in one of the best European leagues putting up all-star numbers. Marco is playing in an average league and putting up, you know, okay numbers at that. I just don't understand how people are expecting that he's going to be better than Lowry, so therefore we just don't need him. Now as far as Wendell being more valuable to the team's success than Lowry, I mean it's honestly debatable. I, I won't stomp my feet and say no way, you know, without a doubt Lowry is more valuable because we have seen him to be more successful when he's on the court. Because when Wendell is playing really well, uh, the team actually is very successful in terms of winning. Uh, but again, when he's playing well, and you could also say the same thing for Lowry in that the Bulls have struggled in not having his scoring and outside shooting. Wendell's defense is obviously more valuable since he's a better defender than Lowry is, but at times, Wendell has also been a liability in guarding some of the best big men in the league. Lowry's offense is better than Wendell, but then you could also say, well, Lowry is a bit of a liability on defense. So I don't know. I, I personally tend to think Lowry is more valuable to this team, especially when thinking of long-term potential. Both are injury prone though and have their flaws. So I can also see the argument being made in favor of Wendell. Let's do one more. And this one comes to us from Jose Lito with a hot take question. I probably should have put this in for one of my mailbags, but I had to include this one because the question is, Will you trade Patty Will for LaMelo right now if you had the chance? Wow, this is honestly a really, really tough one. 
Uh, I mean, if you had asked me this before the season started, I would have said absolutely no way I would want LaMelo. Uh, that's mainly because I wasn't a LaMelo fan. Uh, I thought he was way overhyped, and I honestly thought he would follow in his brother's footsteps for how you know he's been underperforming. But boy, did he shut me up in that regard. And I guess why I should never judge a player's game or work ethic based on their brother's play, because he has been absolutely incredible, especially more recently. I mean, he's already looking like he's better than Lonzo and he's only 19. On top of that, he's a great playmaker, uh, a, a big point guard with a lot of versatility. I mean, you can already tell he's going to be a triple-double threat on a nightly basis as he grows and develops further. I mean, he's averaging 15.5 points per game, 6-6. Six and six. He wasn't even starting for a good portion of the season too, and 18.8 player efficiency rating. At the same time though, I really like Patrick Williams, and although he's not as good as LaMelo is right now, LaMelo is the better player between the two today, but long term, I just see a ton of potential from Williams because he's so strong and has a high basketball IQ on the defensive end. He just needs to perfect his craft on offense to become one of the best two-way players in the game, say five years from now. And as much as I think LaMelo has been great and he's been, uh, you know, had a better rookie season than Williams has thus far, I'm just not sure if his ceiling is as high as Patrick's. I do think LaMelo has a lot of potential, don't get me wrong. I mean, he's showing that right now at age 19 but I feel Williams' ceiling is limitless, and this is a bit of a biased Bulls fan talking, and I might be deluding myself a bit because we drafted Patrick Williams, and naturally I have to stick with him over wishing we had drafted some other guy, I admit that. And yes, the playmaking that we desperately need from a guy like LaMelo would be incredible. Uh, I do think that Williams' game is going to be more valued in the future as he develops and the front office will naturally get you know, the playmaking uh, that we need for this team in other areas. Anyway, I'll leave it there for now. Don't forget to include your hot takes in the comments below if you want to be featured in next week's video. And also let me know what you guys think on my takes in the reaction to some of these. Uh, let me know if you agree or disagree. Don't forget, the Bulls will be taking on the Pelicans tonight for their final game before the All-Star break. I'll have a group chat for the game on the channel as well as in the Discord. Thanks to all those who submitted their hot takes. I really do appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe if you're a Bulls fan as I post daily Bulls content. Thanks again for tuning in, guys, and I will catch you in the next one.